then just chilling. Spent years spinning my wheels and searching for a villain. For real, all I needed was a rhythm, a beat, a cell phone, a notebook, a feeling. A reason to relax, rushing through the past, anxious to the max. Hey yo, and welcome to episode 7 of Limitless. Today we have a real special episode for you. We're making a walnut wallet complete with a Freemason's engraving to signify the importance of money in our society. But form follows function, and the idea for this wallet stems from the frustration of digging individual cards from a rigid wallet. So we'll be attempting to tackle the challenge of fanning out cards. Rev 1. Starting in CAD, I measured a credit card and then laid five of them out in an assembly. This gives me my base to start designing the main structure of the wallet. In an effort to keep the assembly small, I opted to go with metal sliders to push the cards out. Here, I am working on creating five metal sliders that are contained within the walnut assembly, but each one slides a little further than the last. I tried a few different ways to contain them before settling on the outer perimeter of each one. After a fair bit of cleanup work, I finish up the thick half of the walnut assembly. We will call this the A half. I get the five metal sliders in place and then start working on the thin side of the walnut wallet, which we will refer to as the B half. I then start cutting a pocket for a retaining feature. I was thinking I could 3D print a flexible TPU part to compensate for variations in card thicknesses and to try to allow for different numbers of cards to be inserted. With the CAD design complete, I start programming the CNC to cut the A half. After trying a couple times, I got the simulations to look good using an eighth inch end mill. I started out the milling with a half inch end mill. This was just to take my material to the desired thickness. My next investment will be a bandsaw that can resaw six to eight inch hardwood because this is just wasteful. I switched to the eighth inch end mill to machine out the delicate features. In the distant future, I would like to make an automatic tool changer because optimizing these tool paths requires many different bits. With the A half complete, I laid out the metal sliders in a 20 gauge sheet of brass. I wasn't sure how this was going to cut, but I used the eighth inch end mill and just hot glued the brass down. I was left with some burrs to sand, but with the right bits, speeds, and feeds, it should be no problem cutting some softer metals with the CNC. I then started working on the B half. I turned a Freemason's logo into a dot graphic and started engraving it with the laser. I'm 
using eighth inch thin walnut stock for this so I could also cut the perimeter with the laser. Next, I took the rubber retaining feature and ran it through the Creality Slicer. I'm printing this on an Ender 5 Plus. It has a huge build area, but was a bit of an experimental printer. With an upgraded direct drive hot end, it does pretty well with flexible TPU. On to the manual work. I started cutting the A half out with a jigsaw. I then flush trimmed it with this little router table I made from an old Milwaukee router I had. I started sanding and test fitting the brass sliders, the retaining feature, and an inactive credit card. Once I was sure everything would fit well, I began my initial sanding. I used super glue to hold the TPU compensator in place. I gave all the brass sliders a final sanding and got them all lined up and sliding nicely. I did my final prep work before the glue up and used wood glue to permanently bond the A and B halves together, retaining the brass sliders inside. I clamped the assembly together and let it cure overnight. Once dry, I engraved my name into what used to be the A half of the wallet. From here on out, it's just sanding and finishing touches. The more time spent here, the more impressive the final product will be. Finally, I get to test the function. It works well with the right number of cards inside, but the TPU compensator could be much more flexible to accommodate variations. I finish the walnut with cutting board oil. This is an easy product to apply and really accentuates the natural beauty of the wood. You do have to keep reapplying as the wood dries out but it is just so easy and doesn't affect the fits of the mechanical assembly. Overall, it turned out pretty well for Rev1. Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments, would you carry a walnut wallet? <laughs>